Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is Thursday, January 16th, 2020. Take a look at our solar wind speeds right now coming in at 396 even kilometers per second with a density of 3.0. <clears throat> I would have to say that is the solar wind that we were expecting, but it wasn't wasn't as high as we probably thought it was going to go. Nonetheless, that's the increase. As last night we were in the low 300s. We'll continue to watch it, see if we do get any, anything higher than this. But right now, it looks like the bulk of it has passed through. 3.0 is our density today. This is now five days in a row now without a sunspot, six days in 2020, and things look all quiet. There is a coronal hole that is turning Earth-facing right now. We should expect to have effects from that around January 19th through January 20th. Our TCI remains unchanged at 3.11 and our KP indices coming in at a 2 with a 24 hour max of 3. And this morning I have something very exciting and I guess if you're um, into the Grand Solar Minimum and, you, and you're into the research, uh, you guys might know about the Parker Solar Probe and thanks to the watchers they found a video to display this morning and it is basically the sounds of solar wind so I'm gonna go ahead I, I don't know how much of this I can play but I'm gonna play a little bit of it and hope that uh, in hopes that we don't get in trouble for it because this is absolutely fascinating folks um, I woke up this morning and this is one of the first things that I saw on their website uh, here we go Plasma waves, extreme charged particles of plasma called solar wind jets away. And there's several different types of sounds that the Parker Pro picks up here. This is Whistler mode waves. You can find the rest of this video on watchers.news. But I had to share this this morning just because that we've been following this uh, Parker probe for a long, long time. And now, um, just, just hearing some of these sounds, it kind of just really fascinates uh my imagination uh imagining what was happening when those sounds were happening i mean this is what a time to be alive i mean seriously this is great stuff um amazing research that nasa has done to be able to create this probe to capture the sounds and the visuals that we've already gotten from the parker solar probe and we've got so much more to expect here in the next several months too with data that's coming in uh, again yeah, this is just an exciting time to be alive check out the article on watchers.news for more on this but I just wanted to briefly kind of bring this up because I thought it was absolutely fascinating uh, as far as the sounds of this and the captures uh, grand solar minimum and and sometimes I wonder if all this satellite data and all this these uh, these different instruments we use to measure things. I almost wonder if scientists in the in the past were talking about what is coming in the future and how we need to be ready techno, tech, technology wise to monitor this. And most of this feels like this was all built to monitor this particular solar situation. All right, let's go ahead and jump on over to our friends in the UK and Europe regions, uh, guess what? It's raining again. Uh, I'm, sh I'm sure most of you are shocked by that. Uh, but let's go ahead and check out the UK forecast for today. A dry start for many, but another dose of wet and windy weather spreads eastwards after this morning and afternoon with heavy outbursts of rain. 
Skies will be clearing. Showers will fall in the west lately. Windy or later, windy especially in the west. Tonight, daytime cloud and rain clearing eastwards. Finally, clearing far southeastern England during the early hours. Clear skies and then some showers. Some will be heavy, mainly into the south and into the west of UK. Friday it will be sunny, but then showers again. Some will be heavy and quite prolonged as well. The heaviest showers will tend to be in the south and the west. It will feel a little colder than today. And we talked about this a little bit last night that the UK could see some colder uh, temperatures here in the near future, but then only to be uh, overtaken by some mild air by January 31st into February 1st. So we'll continue to watch that. Uh, we keep getting these teases of little tiny cold blasts, but nothing too crazy right now. And really, who wants to be in that bitter cold? Honestly, I don't think anybody out there really cares for that kind of weather. All right, let's take a look at the radar in the U.S. <clears throat> ah, lovely. Guess what? Showers in the south. I know that shocks you, but this has been a continuing pattern. Over and over again, we see showers and thunderstorms rumbling through the south. And this is, it feels like every day it's the same image, uh, same line of storms moving through the south. And then let's move up a little further north here, going up into the northeast where we got some light snow happening right now in the capital region of New York. Some heaviest, actually the heavier band of snow is in our neck of the woods right here, folks. I'll go ahead and... Uh, right in this section here. Uh, the heaviest is upstate New York right now into Vermont and New Hampshire and southern Maine, Portland, Augusta, also now getting some heavier snow showers. Now, I will tell you this, it was only to be about one to two inches. Uh, we're looking more to the three to four inch before this is all said and done as the snow will continue to flow through here upstate New York. Heaviest from Albany all the way north to Burlington. So uh, if you're south of the capital region, your snow is over. And if you're north of the capital region, there's more heavier bands on the way with another inch to two possible this morning. Let's take a look at our weather outlook. <clears throat> First of all, Take a look. I, I wanted to show this chart real fast, too, um, if it'll show up. And it won't. Well, that's awesome. I was going to display the... Maybe it will now. Nope. There, here we go. So, yesterday we had 154 flood alerts in the UK. Today it's 152. So it went down a little bit, but not much. Now we'll move it back over here to the U.S. weather, all right? I just wanted to kind of display that stat. The wind chills still in the northern plains getting battered with very, very, really, really, really cold Arctic air. Negative 35 in parts of North Dakota. Negative 34 out there by the millennial farmer. It is cold. I'm sure he's busy well, cleaning and maintenance in all his equipment for the year. But man, if you're a farmer and you got to wake up to this in the morning, you're outside all day. I mean, even if you're in your barn or your shop working on the on your tractors, it's cold outside. And I hope you have a good heating system as well because, man, negative 35. Here's a look at our frost freeze line. And it's starting to creep a little bit further southward. Now it's just focused on the south being kind of mild. The west coast, California. But that's going to change here in the coming days as well. Take a look at the high temperatures for today. And that area that was on the frost freeze line, you can see the south still in the 60s and 70s. That will come to an end. But look at the high temperatures in the northern plains. That's right, below zero in some spots. So a lot, much, much colder air across Minnesota, North Dakota, and Wisconsin. And we will continue to watch that as that will continue to grow as far as the cold air shot. And then here's the overnight lows, finally. Some lower temperatures reaching the south. The northeast, upstate New York, you have a chance at flirting with zero tonight. And the northern plains continues to see that cold blast all the way through. All right, so here's what Noah thinks is going to happen. Here's today's map. Now, there's Jacob in the center of our screen. Uh, mainly freezing rain and ice right now, but that will change as it progresses towards the northeast. 
Lots of snow in the northwest and in the mountainous regions of Colorado, Idaho. Montana also in on some snow. It's going to be a dry day for you in the very northern plains, and that's because high pressure, and it's just too darn cold for any moisture. And let's take a look at Friday. That's when this storm really gets going, and wow. I mean, it takes up most of the map. The only areas that are safe from any weather tomorrow is the northeast and the southeast. Some showers in Florida, Miami mainly. And then we have a look at Saturday, and that's when Jacob is really full-fledged going here. Now, heavy snow is possible for the capital region of New York, parts of Ma uh, the Berkshires of Massachusetts, uh, southern New Hampshire, southern Vermont, and southern parts of Maine. Uh, I've been saying 6 to 10 inches for the, this region during this storm over the next, um, over the next uh, two days. And I'm, I'm going to stick with the 6 to 10 as local forecasters are now starting to put numbers on this. I'm seeing first reports of 4 to 8 inches. So we'll see. Um, but as we look at this on the Tropical Tidbits map, we'll see that this storm is a fast mover. It's not going to be around for a whole lot of time. Here we are dealing with this, uh, what I thought was going to be a light event. is turning into a possible decent amount of snow here, maybe 2 to 4, 3 to 5 inches. That's going to move out. Jacob is moving across the Midwest into the Ohio Valley. It's all rain for you folks. No snow for you guys. This even becomes a rain event for Michigan as well, unless you live in the UP. And then by Saturday, Sunday, the heaviest snow will be falling. And GFS acts like there's going to be rain mixing in, which is possible. But at this point, I'd have to say this is going to be an all snow event for the Northeast as lake effects will linger on Monday, especially if you live in Buffalo, Erie, PA, and central New York, you'll see lake effect showers also on Tuesday, January 24th, but that cold air takes a deep dive. Jacksonville, Florida, you'll actually have some colder air to deal with as well. Going into Wednesday, January 22nd, another storm moving across the Midwest, but the GFS is not saying that this one, well, it already changed. <laughs> this one's going to be one to watch. Uh, this was that signature we've been talking about with the Nor'easter. And the forecast models have changed. It's been going up the coast and then out to sea. Well, now it's taking more of an inland track going towards the coast, but not going all the way following through to the northeast. It's going to move off to sea in the mid-Atlantic states. But I'm still interested to watch this as GFS now has shown three different versions of a possible uh, nor'easter and, and a massive snowstorm here. So we'll keep our eyes on that. That one's indicating much heavier snowfall. And that will be late next week where we could expect that. Other than that, guys, typical normal winter patterns as we go to the end of the month and there's another system that is doing the same thing that the one on the 25th is doing right now. But lots of cold air across the northern parts of the United States, northeast, the northern plains, and the northwest, obviously, the Great Lakes as well. The Ohio Valley will still, will finally get into some of this action of cold and snow, but we won't see much of that uh, around until probably... Oh, it looks like close to mid-February at this at this rate. I mean, it's rain snow here on the 24th and 25th, but uh, slim pickings. A lot of folks that live in Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, uh, we haven't seen the normal winter by now. Normally, we've had a couple snow snowstorms by now, at least one, and we really haven't seen that kind of action. That that spot right there seems to appear to be mild and wet so far this winter. But very cold to the northeast and very cold to the northern plains. So plenty of cold to go around. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me today. Uh, we hope everyone has a, a great day on this Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow morning for the next Grand Solar Minimum update. And then don't forget to call in on our call-in show. That is tomorrow night, Friday night at 9 p.m. The topic is going to be how do you talk to your friends and family about the Grand Solar Minimum. Until then, guys, we will talk soon. Do you like this show? Give us a thumbs up. Want to support us more? Share to your favorite social media platform. Buy a t-shirt or become a Patreon. All links are in the description below.